Hi there, this is actually a request from Walney Klein, I, I hope I've got your name right, um, who wants to know how to create a musical note, a sequence of musical notes, uh, and how to play them in order. So it's Do, Re, Mi, and then the the uh, number of seconds for, for each note, how long it should be played. Um, so uh, they want to read it in from a file as well. So in this uh, video, I'm going to show how to create musical notes using a, a, a sine wave um, and to attach them to a file, read in the, the values of the file and then play those musical notes. And the, the, um, the, outs, the output of that is this. So um, without further ado, let's get started after the fade. So the way I'm going to tackle this is I did some I did some research um, and okay <laughs> um, what I found was uh, the you can create audio clips on the fly and there's a couple of things you can do you can use the this PCM reader callback and PCM set position callback but I think what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to create an audio clip that um, doesn't <laughs> that, that doesn't use the callbacks and we just set those values manually. I think this should work. I'm, I'm going to try it just now as a sort of first pass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my trusty, I'll just zoom in for a sec. Uh, I'm going to use this trusty handy dandy uh, musical note frequency conversion chart thingy. Uh, and I'm going to start at um, the first a above middle C, middle C is C4. So the first A above that is at 440 Hertz. So this is the example they actually give you down here, which is 440 Hertz, which is, is uh, the, the A above C. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do that. Sorry, my voice is going. Not a good start to the video. So I'm gonna try and do that just now. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to create a, a, a button that, that actions it. So, um, UI, um, button text mesh pro. Yep. Let's import everything in here. I like the text mesh pro ones cause it, it's got like the, the font hand, the fonts are handled a little bit better. Uh, although as usual, when I say that it screws up the size of the button. So there you go. Um, and then button in here is going to have a uh, play. So it's just going to play the sound. So I'm going to create a folder in here called script. Uh, and inside here, um, I'm going to create a C sharp script, which is just going to be a temporary C sharp script, but it's going to be play notes because we're going to read this in the, the request is to read it in from a file. I'm not going to do the C the the, uh, the CSV file. You can do that yourself. I'm going to actually use a JSON file, but it's the exact same thing. It's just going to be reading in those values and then playing whatever those values are. So I'm just going to call this play sequence. Um, so play sequence, the the first kick of the can, and this is I, this is kind of what I want to show is the the sort of thought process on on how to solve a particular problem. So the the problem in this case is play a sequence of notes. The first problem is how do you play a note? Well, actually the first problem, the actual first problem is how do you create a note? And so that's what we're gonna be doing just now. So I'm gonna drag and drop this onto the button there. And then I'm gonna double click this and that's gonna fire up Visual Studio. And we'll wait for that to start. So um, while that's doing that, we'll go back to the code here. So we create an, an audio clip. We have an audio source. We need to add an audio source to that. Um, we set that clip to be there and then we set the clip to play. Now, what happens is when you play it, it does this callback, which is the audio read. And so it passes in that data. We want to avoid doing that. We want to basically set those values because we want to have a clip that plays we want to have, we want to have notes audio clips for each note and we'll make the notes an arbitrary size like five seconds long or something so um we have here the position sample rate and frequency um and this one they pass in how many seconds is it 
number of sample frames is sample rate times two. So they pass in, it's a two second uh, sample rate. So uh, the question here is, it's gonna be in um, a CV file, CSV file with musical notes and how long it should be played in a sequence to, to put it into play. So do, re, mi, do. So um, we're gonna to have to put like dash because the maybe the, the maybe that do is the high do the because it's a b c d e f g a that's your octave um and that's where you get do re mi fa sol la ti do or actually in that order you know what i mean um so the csv i'm defining for example how do you read the notes in sequence and play okay um so let's create uh, a sequence first of all let's add an audio source to this so here's our buttons button 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 and then we add audio source so we add that audio source we don't have a clip in there yet but we will in a sec um, so for our start um, one moment please okay now that that's been fixed uh, let me go back to where we were uh, okay, so we've got audio source there, that's fine, and then we're going to do um, audio source equals get component audio source, and then we want to create a clip. Now the clip, um, we're going to use, we're going to, we're going to crib off this value here. So I'm going to create this clip based on these values. So I'm just going to copy these here so I don't need public that there um, I don't need position but I do need frequency um, and I'm going to create the clip by doing var clip equals audio clip dot create uh, and I want to pass in the name of it. So this is going to be A440, because that's what the frequency is. Um, the length of it is going to be um, just the sample rate, because it's going to be the number of samples. I'm just going to make it one second just now. So that's going to be sample rate. Uh, channels, we're going to go for one, just to keep it simple. Uh, the frequency is going to be the frequency. Um, and then stream is crazy. Creates a user with a name again like the frequency stream. True if the clip is streamed, that is if da, 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 da. so it's not, so we're not going to stream it, we're gonna create that. So it doesn't like frequency. Uh, what did it pass in there? One Sample rate. Sample rate. Did that send that to sample rate? Okay. And then we're going to do create clip uh, frequency. And then I'm going to create that method there. So I'm going to do command period and then generate method. And that's going to create that for me. I don't need the update. Um, okay, so for the clip, I'm going to do um, um, let's do uh, clip dot get data. Oh yeah, you got to put it into the data. Okay, so you need to do float data equals new float, and then it's going to be clip dot frequency uh, in hertz and then I've got to multiply that by uh, the number of seconds times clip dot length and that gives me that there frequency isn't oh uh I'm going to make that float. Actually, that would be math if ceiling that. Is it not like 
like in here. Let me let me bring this out here. So this is going to be um, size var size equals that. So what is size coming out? Uh, size is coming out as a float. So that's not good. So this is an integer, and this is going to be a float. So I'm going to make that an int. There. Okay. Size. All right. And then uh, we'll count data less than that. Do that. Okay. So I'm just going to copy that wholesale, paste that in there, and that is going to say I don't need to know position. Um, do I need to know position? I do need to know sample weight though. Uh, int sample rate. Sample rate. And then the position. Do I, do I need to know position? I mean, it seems like we're just adding that there. So surely it should just be count. I don't know. I'm going to change that to count. Because I don't think we need that there. And that should create the clip. And when we want to play it, uh, we need to also specify a public method. So public void. Um, oh, we need to store that clip as well. Play clip. So I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to say clip equals that. Private audio clip clip okay clip and then I'm gonna say actually I don't need that there I just need this here and I'm just gonna play one shot play one shot clip boom and that should play the sound so. All of this is just so that we can play one one note just now, um, and then we'll amend it later on. So I'm going to add. Let me just bring this up here so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to add a listener for this object, which is this object. Come on, this object here. And then the function is play sequence and it's going to be play clip. And you can see that just, just above my head there. So fingers crossed, uh, when we run this, it should create the clip. And then when we press the button, it should play the clip. And it should be a tone of 440 hertz, which is 440 cycles per second sine wave which should mean it should go Ooh. Um, i'm not entirely sure if that pitch perfect or not probably not so no errors in the console which is good and i'm not hearing anything um Okay, let's do, let's test that out there so we can see uh, audio source dot clip equals clip, audio source dot loop equals true, audio source dot play. Okay, so never mind the clicking, we'll just play it as soon as we get it. Um, and Maybe that'll work. Well, okay, so it has set it to that. Uh, but that doesn't seem to have any... No, it's definitely playing it. It's just nothing there. Okay, so the data is not being set. So do I need to apply the... Ah, I probably need to apply the data. So it's going to be clip dot applied set data set data ha <laughs> ha so it's going to be data zero okay that makes sense 
All right, so now we should get a tone when we press play. So it might be a bit loud, so I do apologize. Woohoo! Okay. So that's it. We're, we're on our way. This is us. We're on our way. Okay. So now with this little trusty thing in here, I need to create a whole bunch of audio clips and then play those audio clips. So that's the next step is uh, to, to create these ones. So that's what I'm going to do just now. Um, that is uh, basically it's, it's going to be let me just uh, Sorry, I need to I need to hold this up to, to here. I'm going to use I'm going to use Darth Vader to to point here. So <laughs> there's Darth Vader there. Um, this is high tech, this isn't it? So that's basically these values here. So A through to G, and then it's going to be so that you see there the A is at 440, uh, and we're going to go through to G, and then it's going to be up here for uh that a as well and that's going to give us do re mi fa so la ti do da dum the whatever it is okay all right so uh first thing is to tidy this up here um and add a few things that we're going to add up here so i'm going to enter all these codes um so i'm going to have public int um frequencies uh equals new int and I'm going to default it to B, um, is that A5 in the piano, which is 440 and above. It's going to be 440, uh, 494, 523, 587, 659, 698, 784, and 880. I also need the name of the frequency, so I'm going to do public string. Frequency names equals new string, um, and those are going to be do, re, mi, fa, Peter Gabriel's fifth album, uh, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and then do with the little bit there. That's going to be the frequency names, which means I need to have a way to map those frequency names to the frequencies to the clips. So I don't really care about the frequencies after the fact. I just need to know what the clip to play. So I'm going to have a private oh, private dictionary string uh, clip uh, audio clip. Um, clips so I don't need audio clip there and I'm going to create uh, yeah, yeah, there. okay the sample rate and the frequency uh, frequency I don't need the sample rate I do so I'm going to do that there and I'm going to say public sample rate is that so again, that's 44,100 cycles, so 44.1 kilohertz, which is roughly CD quality, I think, um, which is good, good enough for what we're doing. Um, and then that can go as well, because we're not playing those there. And then for each one of these frequencies, we want to attach the name and the clip to it. So I don't want to create, an, oh no, I, I do want to do that, but I want to do uh, int i equals actually four int i equals zero i less than frequencies dot length i plus plus um, so uh, string frequency name name equals frequency names i and I want to create a clip so I want to say uh, audio clip clip equals create clip and then the name of it which is going to be the frequency name um, and then the sample rate which is going to be the sample rate and then the frequency itself which is going to be frequencies these i that's going to create that 
um, and then I want to see uh, clips add frequency name clip okay so I don't need this just yet uh, create clip is going to be string clip name uh, and then I'm going to take this here uh, var, uh, clip equals create the clip so that's going to be the clip name and then it's going to be the sample rate that we pass in uh, and then this needs to return an audio clip as well uh, so we're going to create that blah, 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 and then we do return clip okay so we got everything there we don't need this here uh, and I think that's everything that we need to have for this point here so if I play this now, uh, we should, if we go to button, so button doesn't have anything on it, uh, but if I go to the debug, oops, where are we? Uh, what do we have here? So we have our frequency names and we have our frequencies, but if I go to the debug option, I think it should tell us what we have in here. That's uh, not. Uh, I thought it would tell us the sort of hidden values in there, but it's not. Okay, well, it was worth a try. Okay, so that's those values there. What we then need to do is we need to be able to read those values in from a file. And to do that, uh, I'm going to create two new f classes here. So the first class is just going to be note itself. So uh, I get rid of that. I'm going to do public class note serializable uh, public string uh, note name public float dura duration um, and then what am I going to do? public float name duration and then I need to have note sequence as well so I need to have add class note sequence um, and note sequence is going to be super simple Realizable public note notes that's it that's all it's going to have um, and the reason why I'm making it serializable is because I'm going to create a JSON object out of it and then I'm going to um, add those values to, uh, I'm going to read those values in. So to do that, um, I'm going to uh, create this one over here. Um, so I'm going to create this blank one here. So uh, I'm going to have notes. Uh, is going to be a sequence, so it's going to be a number of notes here, and each one of these notes is going to be the, the values that are going to give. So I'm going to use the ones from here, so it's do, re, mi, do. I'm not entirely sure if it's do, re, mi, do, but um, I'm going to leave it as do, re, mi, do just now. So I'm going to copy these values in here. Uh, I'm going to use lowercase just to make it a little bit easier, but you can do some ignore case sensitivity and all that kind of stuff. So you want to do uh, each one of these is going to be name. What do I call it? Uh, note name. Let's call it name just to make it simpler. So we get name and duration. So name is do. Duration uh, is 0 0.1456. So that's the number of seconds for the duration. And I'm going to do that for do uh, re me do right there re me do and that is one five six seven one six four five and one five four five okay and I'm going to go and grab that and I'm going to open this. I'm going to go to JS. Yep, 
paste that in there. Validate JSON. Oh, doesn't like that. Okay, I made a mistake there. That there, we can wrap that there. Okay, so that's good. All right, so I'm going to create this file here, save it, and one sec. Um, Blow trays, uh, where are we? Do I need the project? So I'm going to create a new folder here called resources. over here so I'm going to call it resources and then inside here I'm just going to call it notes.json that's going to be me and then um, I'm going to um, go to play sequence and I'm going to create a um, public text asset um, and I'm going to call this note sequence okay so note sequence um, and then I'm going to have to create a new method here so it's going to be uh, public void play sequence um, I'm going to do JSON equals dot text. So that's going to read in the text file there. That's how easy it is to read in a text asset, by the way. You just do that. Uh, and then your note sequence is going to be note sequence equals uh, JSON utility dot parse from JSON. Uh, JSON. Um, what did I not like here? Oh, oh yeah, okay, that's probably a good idea. Uh, let's call it play notes. Uh, let's call it play notes. So note sequence, why is it not like that? Uh, what? Declaration of the local variable hides the field. What? Um. I'm so confused right now. Is that going to fix everything? Why is that saying that? Cannot use local variable note sequence before it is declared. Um, I'm not. Let me just call this note sequence. What? Oh, shoot. That's why. Um, darn it. Uh, let's just call it sequence. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so now we want to go through each one of these and we want to play them as a one-off. So I want to do start coroutine, uh, play the sequence, sequence, um, and I'm going to have private, oops, private I enumerator, uh, play the sequence, um, note sequence, sequence, um, 
for int i equals zero, i less than sequence dot notes dot length i plus plus. Um, and um, we want to get rid of the audio. We want to get the audio source here. So we want to say var audio source equals new oh, equals get component audio source. So what we're doing in this part is we're obviously playing the sequence, but we need to know what note to play. So the note is going to be var clip equals um, notes. What do I call it? Clips. Aha. Uh -huh. Clips, and then it's going to be. Uh, let's get a note from here first of all. So var note equals sequence dot notes i. So that's going to be note dot name, and then we want to play it for a certain duration. So we're going to do audio source dot play one shot, um, and that is going to be the clip. And I'm going to do yield return new wait for seconds note dot duration. And I'm going to stop it. So we say audio source dot stop. <clears throat> and then that should be it. Yield return null. No. Uh, oh, uh, using system collection. So that should go there. We don't need that. Um, okay, so for each note in there, we're going to go through, we're going to go grab the note, we play the note based on that, that note, one shot, and then we wait for a certain number of seconds, which is the duration of the, the, the notes, and then we stop the audio, and then we play the next set of notes. Okay, and we do all this when we hit play. So play sequence, let me get rid of that debug, put it into normal. So we don't need that, don't need that. Uh, the button, we need to do play sequence, and then this is going to be play notes. So when we play this, we should hear da 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 da, I guess. Uh, nope. Did not like it. Oh, because we haven't dragged that across there. Okay. So we go to resources and we just drag that text box over to there and that will solve that problem. So now we should hear the sequence of notes. And there you go. Very pleasant. Um, so that's it. Uh, I guess that's uh, how you do that um, that thing there that you wanted to do, which was um, CSV file. It doesn't really matter whether it's a CSV file or whether it's a JSON file. Um, you want to play a series of musical notes, how long it should be played in sequence. Um, so how would you read the notes in sequence and play? And that's how I would do it, is I would use um, audio clips. I would then create the, the, the frequency tones that you need um, using uh, this little handy dandy algorithm down here um, and then to play in sequence I would create a JSON file you could use a um, you could use a CSV file it doesn't really matter uh, that the instructions for that are is in that that previous video uh, but this one here shows how to do it using a JSON file um, and that's it that's really all there is to it and that's it. Um, that's actually kind of quite a quick video for, for me anyway. Um, how to play a sequence of musical notes. If you don't have um, a, a sampler, you can create your own musical notes. So there you go. Um, handy if you're doing any 8-bit classics. You could probably get like sawtooth waves and, and square waves and things in there as well. So um, yeah. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you liked it, then thumbs up. Um, that would be great. It would be very much appreciated. 
Uh, if you got this far and you want to see more content like this, then don't forget you can also hit the subscribe button and notification bell, and you'll get timely reminders from YouTube uh, of when I post up a new video. But thank you very much for watching this one, and I will catch you in the next video.